Mary me, Annie here. I had a couple of topic suggestions on my return video I did, my summer's end video, and I wanted to do videos on them. The first one, and this is the comment from my viewer. I've been thinking a lot about the nature of online friends and community lately, especially since I find myself spending a lot of time connecting with people here. I often wonder how to take it to the next level, or is it possible? One click of a button and everything and everyone disappears. I ponder the meaning of online friendship in one of my vlogs and I'm still thinking about it a lot. I would love to hear your thoughts on if that is something you ever thought about yourself. Indeed it is something I have thought about myself. And I cannot make light of the possibility of who we meet online and who they become to us. I met my husband online. I met my soulmate, my Anamkara, online. And I met my best friend online. In fact, in that case, through here on YouTube. It is a tricky world, this online world. And I think my viewer put their finger on one of the reasons why it can be so tricky. It can feel so ethereal that someone you care about disappears, goes away, stops commenting in venues we're used to seeing them doesn't respond to emails, is not part of a discussion group anymore. Maybe someone we cared about here on YouTube that maybe they didn't even know it. They stopped making videos and just disappeared. And it feels like they've disappeared from our life, doesn't it? It can be like that. There's a shifting, uncertain, ethereal connection to the way we connect with people online. There's lots of things to consider, isn't there? Are we connecting with the real person? Or is it a persona that someone puts up? What are they here for? What are their purposes or ulterior motives? Are they looking for the same kind of connection we are? Do we really get to know someone? Through words on a video, which are certainly presented in a certain way. I gave thoughts to what I'm going to say in this video before turning the cam camera on, that's for sure. Do we read between their words accurately? Do we interpret emotions correctly when it's the written presentation of an emotion? There's so many things to consider. And I've had some reason to think about that kind of thing recently actually in regard to my own failure at being present online, even to those I care about deeply. I think the answer is more than anything time. When we are in communication with someone on YouTube, we get to know them over time by the videos they post. Seeing a video we like, one video, and then proceeding to reach out and start a conversation. Well, we're, we're getting to experience the person in that one video, in that one moment frozen in time. It happens in group discussions and online forums too. The truth is, in that moment, there's not a lot that we get to know about a person. Time, for me, has been the answer to developing meaningful online relationships. Seeing someone in their ups and downs and appreciating the struggles and in the grace they weigh, the way they handle those struggles. There are people I enjoy on YouTube and in discussion forums that I would, having considered their presence over a length of time, I like them as an inspiration and an acquaintance and I like being in touch with them. But just because there is some shared interest it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a call to friendship there. No, a call to connection and socialization, perhaps. But this viewer was talking about when we want to take it deeper. I think it takes time. I think it takes intent on both people, or all of the people, if it's a group. All the parts of those who are being connected to have a true interest in sharing authentic self and being curious about the authentic self of others, it requires in great me measure not jumping to conclusions. At our best, we can still say something in a video where 
someone could take it not the way we meant it, but definitely the way it was reality and the way they heard it. Writing is the same way, whether it's a blog or a discussion forum. Or possibilities like Facebook, where something we say. Well, here's an example. Today at church, a woman I love dearly came up to me. In a meeting she and I were in recently, we shared... I can't remember what the exact question was, but it was something like, and these were all people who did not know each other yet, by the way. We were getting to know each other. That was the purpose of this gathering. We shared something about, the question may have been, where, where, where were you raised? Where were you as a young person? And what are your feelings about that? And we had all different kinds of answers. Some raised by their grandparents and had feelings about that. Good feelings or feelings of being abandoned. There was... Oh, memories of someone who lived in the city and loved it, missed it, someone who lived in the country. And I said something that she brought up to me today because she wanted to know a little bit more about it. I do not remember my particular words, and I wish I did, but I mentioned growing up in the South and how it was a very, very difficult and traumatic experience for me. My friend took me aside after church and she said, I really want to talk to you more about that. My friend, with her beautiful, beautiful poetic southern accent, which always moves me and inspires me, my friend was concerned about the way I had phrased myself. She heard that I had a problem with the South, that maybe I had prejudice against those from the South. It certainly wasn't what my comment was. It was a reflection on that moment in that place for me, and indeed it was an extremely traumatic physical and emotional experience. But it wasn't a reflection on the South. And her pointing out to me how it had felt listening to that, like her, her heritage and her culture and her roots were all being judged by someone who really wasn't from that place but lived there for a while. My point is, I had no intention to belittle the South. I love the South. I love Southerners. Just like the North comes with its inherent set of challenges, inherited cultural ideals, sets of beingness that might not fit in my contemporary view of the world. I experienced that where I live now, as well as when I was a child in the South. But what she heard was me disparaging the South. We had the chance to talk it out face to face. And then with hugs and kisses and a deeper understanding of each other. We don't always have that possibility online. Even if you offer an explanation for a misbehavior, it may be time before someone sees it. And even that exclamation, there's not the give and take in real time can be misinterpreted or misunderstood. It's important to be online from a place of love, to understand we are going to misunderstand sometimes and we are going to be misunderstood sometimes. The thing is you then have to work at finding others who are online the same way, with the same goals, with the same heart. And you just have to walk away from those who are not. If we were all in a room together someplace, you and me and maybe all the viewers of my YouTube videos, well, it would be a pretty crowded room, that's for sure. But would we be feeling equally connected to everyone in that room? In real life, meaning the non-cyber life, which I hate to describe as real because this is very real as far as I'm concerned. We would pick and choose who we would spend time with by how their energy felt and whether we were curious about them, whether they were curious about us. All the reasons why, if you walk into a room, and conversations are going on all over the room, who do you gravitate towards and why? And then, why do you move away from a pocket of conversation that doesn't suit you, it makes you feel uncomfortable? Maybe online we're not quite as good at walking away from because we're here for connection and community. And sometimes we stay at something that doesn't feed our soul. There's other opportunities to have our soul fed. As I'm saying we need to walk away sometimes from groups or certain individuals. 
<laughs> engage our heart. And if things look different, it's because I switched over to my other camera because I ran out of battery. Haven't been on videos for a while. I forgot about charging batteries. In real life, well, the other life, we walk away from situations and folks that aren't feeding our soul. Sometimes we forget we have the right to do that here now. We don't have to be present to everything and everyone. We can pick and choose. And then it's a matter of time. Letting time unfold. We can't expect because we are attracted to or enjoy the presence of another that they enjoy our presence. And we can't take it personally. If we just don't seem to make the connection at a deeper level we'd hope for, Okay, let it go. There's a whole wide world of other people to meet. Other ways to engage. I admit, some of the, I want to call them rules, the guidelines that I would follow for powerful and potent relationships online are ones that I have failed to honor at times, especially this past year when I suddenly went offline. Dis disconnected myself from almost everyone that I know online without really offering any explanation, just a moving away. I wanted to mention that because even with the best of intentions, we can be called into the other aspects of our life. We can need to be someplace else. We can certainly share that instead of just disappearing off the scene, which I wanted to mention because indeed that's what I did. I hurt some feelings in the process. There are a few that I kept in touch with in other ways, and there are lots of people, some I truly love, that I lost, they lost, the connection was separated while I was focusing on some other things in my life. I'm blessed that they have offered me love and support and understanding, if not understanding, uh, knowing that it, any of my behaviors were not meant intentionally to be rude or disrespectful to them. That I was dealing with some of my own problems and withdrew without even knowing I was going to, without mentioning it to them. It is, even when we are in touch with loved ones, a difficult way of being. So I don't want to disavow the challenges or make it sound like I do it well. <laughs> At my best, I do it extremely well. I have met heart mates, life partners, soul mates, those who matter greatly to me in this way. But there are those I love that I've also disconnected myself from. Oh, at times because I felt like they weren't being real and true and honestly representing themselves. Hesitating to make that judgment, just feeling, going by instinct that it was so. I'd see how they behaved with others. And I didn't want to hold it against them. I don't think, except in a few cases, I have held it against someone because of the way they've treated someone else. But I don't know if, I, if we were all in that room together and I saw someone being rude and obnoxious to others. I wouldn't take it personally, but I would pull back from connection with that person. It's a decision we have to make, isn't it? So, I would also say that what enters the picture is how thick our skin is. I don't think online communities are for everyone. The same way that in our lives offline, some of us just don't have a comfort level with being vulnerable and open in groups of people or even one-on-one -on -one with new acquaintances. We can't deal with the challenges of interpersonal relationships. They are, I think, magnified online because of the lack of instantaneous connection and the, the ways we read between each other's words or listen between each other's words according to how we get to know an online friend. I have never, with one exception in all the years I've been online, been hurt and took something personal that someone did. This happened to be someone that I had given my heart to and cared for greatly and deeply and a woman I respect and who was a great teacher to all of us. She broke my heart. That didn't cause me to have a harder heart when it came to being online. But in that relationship with her and my relationship with anyone I've met online, I always have a, a knowledge that you know me, 
a different way when you know me online than you would if we really were sitting down face to face. And if something feels personal, I feel like I should be hurt or insulted or angry. Mostly not. Mostly not. Maybe I haven't done a good job of representing myself. Maybe I just need to accept, embrace the concept that I'm not going to be loved or even liked by everybody I come in contact with. There is a a danger in online friendships that we come needing to be loved, needing to be liked. But the problem is we humans do that all the time in almost all of our relationships in life. Just being with the possibility of friendship and good conversation, allowing time to teach me more about the individuals I'm in communication with, watching not only just their interactions with me, but their interactions with others. Over time, that has what led me to the intimate, personal, deep connections I have with those that ended up in my heart that I only know might not ever meet elsewise online. I don't know if there's any gems in all of that. I can acknowledge it's challenging for all of this. I can acknowledge my own lack of being present. When I think back over this past year, actually more than that, where I have come and gone a bit from my online relationships, even in consideration of how much I love some of the people those connections have been with. I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky. The connections have survived any withdrawal, explained or otherwise, that I offered those people. We don't need a hard skin, I think, to be online. We need a heart, because if we don't have a heart online, we don't recognize others who are truly present with their heart. But we do need to be in a place there where we understand the limitations of how we can represent ourselves, how others can represent themselves. And we need to be slow on responses. We need to be eager to engage and discuss when there's the perception of problems or difficulties. And we also need to be willing to step away. I really believe in our face-to-face -face lives are better at that than we are online. I certainly have felt like I was a codependent to some of my online communities and relationships over the years. And if those very relationships were happening in the here and now, I wouldn't have been as codependent, as needy, as needful of those connections. I would have dealt with it much more healthy face-to-face -face than I have sometimes dealt with it online. I think I've learned a lot over the years. I appreciate being online more than ever now. I also appreciate when I need to step away from it. I also appreciate it as a balance to the part of my life which has lived off the computer. I honor that it needs to be a balance. I need to know the value a communication brings me, a group brings me, something like this brings me. I need to know who I am in relation to that and what I take away from it. But it has been a teaching for me on open-mindedness, acceptance, sometimes tolerance of individuals that can be a little tricky in the online community, as much as it has been the power to say no and walk away from any group or relationship online. It doesn't feed my heart. It's not easy, but we owe it to ourselves, I think. My having that attitude means when I'm online, I am present to it. With all my faults, hopefully with all my good bits too. And there then becomes power, comfort, enjoyment, and even love in the time that I'm online. I love your thoughts on this. I know the viewer who asked me the question would love your thoughts on this. We're all in this together, and we're all in this in different ways. Our experiences are different. Our wisdom out of the experience is different. Video responses would be really awesome for this one. It's a place we all connect, isn't it, my friends? The place where we are, we are present, and we are witness to the presence of others in this amazing online 
world. I wish you all mirth and reverence. Merry part.